Okay, so we're learning to use the quadratic formula here. So whenever we have an equation, a quadratic equation that looks like this, ax squared, that's something times x squared, plus bx, that's something times x to the first power, plus c, plus some constant, and definitely has to be equal to 0. If there's a 5 over here, then subtract 5 from both sides, so you have 0 on this side, very important. Then we can find x by using this quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, there it is. So we plug a in uh, here and here, b right there and there, c right there, uh, whatever those numbers are, um, and there we go, we're on our way. So we will find x by taking negative b. What's b? b is the number that's multiplied by x. Always the number that's multiplied by x. Okay, so I find the x, I find the number that's multiplied by x, what is that? That's the number 1, so we put a 1 right there, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 1 squared, minus 4, times a, that's 9, times c, which is negative 12, all over 2 times a. Alright, so that's x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of... Okay, this is uh, 1 minus, let's see, I see I, let's say plus, because we're going to have a negative times a negative. That's going to be positive. Um, 4 times 9 times 12. That's not really something I'm going to try and do in my head on the spot. So 12 times 4 times 9, 432 over 18 x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 433 over 18. We can find our decimal approximations. Negative 1 plus the square root of 18. We could go back here and put in some parentheses. Divide this all by 18. <coughs> um, I don't know why I put 18 here. Silly. 430. Uh, insert. 433. There you go. 1.100. So just 1.1 .1 will be fine. Um, let's go back and we'll just bring that back up again. You press second enter, it brings back the previous line. And we'll put minus instead of plus. Negative 1.2. to the next page. Okay, we'll take this whole thing. There we go. There it is again. Um, Alright, so now we just have maybe some bigger numbers is really the only difference. Uh, x equals negative b. b is the number that's multiplied by you know, x, just x, or g, to the first power, not to the second power. So negative 11 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4 times a. a is negative 5. That's the number that's multiplied by g squared times c, which is 7, all over 2 times a. One twenty-one. Negative times negative is going to give us a positive. So we've got twenty here times seven. Uh, One forty over negative ten. X equals negative eleven plus or minus the square root of two sixty-one. Two sixty-one over negative ten. Now we can grab our calculator. Parentheses here, negative 11 plus the square root of 261. Parentheses around there, divided by negative 10, negative 0.52. That's the other one. What if we subtract that square root instead of add it? Uh, so we'll bring that back up. And 
subtract instead of add. Uh, 2.715. Yeah, 2.72. All right, so hopefully you get the idea. Always, well, even if this were written as, uh, say, 11g minus 5g squared plus 7 equals 0, careful that you don't make this a and this b and this e just because you see them in that order from left to right. A is always the number that we multiply by the g squared, or the x squared, the m squared, whatever. Uh, B is always the number that you multiply by the variable that's to the first power, and then C is always the constant. Okay. So make sure you can always identify A, B, and C. Alright. Uh, well, remember, let's paste this in on this page that your equation must be written in this form before you can use a quadratic formula. So we have to have this side be 0. So we'll subtract 14x from both sides. There are no x's over here. There's no like terms. So it just kind of gets squeezed in there. We'll put it in order. 5x squared minus 14x minus 7. Right, so now we have a and b and c. So x equals negative negative 14. Right, negative b plus or minus square, the square root of a negative 14 squared. Uh, let me see what I have back here. Okay, I'm going to make sure I squared that uh, b before. Um, minus 4 times a times c all over uh, 2 times a, a is 5. Equals, that's going to be a positive 14 plus or minus the square root of what is 14 squared? It's going to be a plus because we have negative times negative. Um, let's see, oh, I just did this, had exactly these same numbers before. I guess I'm not that creative. Over 10. Uh, we have 14 plus or minus the square root of um, 336 over 10. Uh, so, yeah. And so we do the plus and the minus, we find the two solutions. Thought I'd save you the time it took me to type all in the calculator. I got 3.23 and negative 0.43. Okay, same story here. We need to do this to be written in the form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We need a 0 over there. So we'll subtract a w, subtract a 9. Subtract w, subtract 9. We're going to get 6w squared. There's no w's to combine this negative w with, so we just get minus w. But 5 minus 9 is negative 4, and on this side we have 0. So we have negative b, b is negative 1, right? So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And uh, what's that divided by 2 times a? So x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, yeah, plus because negative times negative is positive. Um, we got uh, 24 times 4, 96 over 12. x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 12. Right, so that gives us the two solutions. And there they are, it's two solutions. <coughs> Okay, this one. Um, so, uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, they're asking us to decide which method to use. Now, the quadratic formula is really cool because you can use it on any quadratic formula, but uh, that's not always uh, the most practical thing to do. I mean, look at this. We could get x squared by itself and take the square root, and we'll be done. Um, 
if we were to use a quadratic formula, we'd have to add 125 to both sides. We'd have to put a 0x in there. We'd have to you know, do a whole lot of stuff. But if I just get this x squared by itself by dividing by negative 5, I'll get x squared equals positive 25. Take the square root, x equals plus or minus 5, I'm done. Right? To contrast that, I'd, I'd have to put everything together on one side. We'd have to have negative 5x squared. We'd have a, minus, or is a plus 125. Then we have to think about, oh, that's plus 0x. And then we do negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And then we do uh, over 2a. And we have to boil this all down, take the square root, and do all that stuff when I could have just done that to begin with. So I'll use uh, the square roots method. Uh, this one. I uh, could use a quadratic formula, but these numbers aren't too big. They're, they're not too uh, crazy. Um, you know, this there's a 1 right here, and this is an even number. That makes completing the square really easy. So uh, maybe I'll add 3 to both sides. Now I leave that blank there. I'm going to complete the square. Okay, I know this is going to be x plus half of this squared. When I multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2, I get x, x squared plus 4x plus 2 times 2 is 4. So I need to add 4 to both sides. So this is going to equal 7. Um, we'll take the square root of both sides. Uh, x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Subtract 2, and we get x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. Right, you'll notice this plus or minus square root thing. It's uh, no coincidence that that's, you know, these solutions look like this when you use completing the square. If you use completing the square, you can derive the quadratic formula. Pretty cool thing. Uh, so I can find my decimals if I want to for this answer here. But I'll leave that to you if you want to do that. Uh, this one looks like a mess. Uh, there's not really, a, I'm not gonna really isolate the x squared. Uh, you know, it just looks like kind of a big, messy hassle. So maybe I'll just get everything on one side, get it equal to zero, use the quadratic formula. I think that's what I'll do. Let's get everything on one side. Minus 5x squared plus 12x on both sides. So we get a negative 8x squared um, plus 12x plus 7 equals 0. It's just uh, these numbers, they're gross, they're big. They, it would be difficult to factor this. Um, definitely um, kind of a drag to complete the square on it. So maybe we use the quadratic formula instead. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared plus that negative 12. So it's a positive 12 squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a x equals negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus uh, 4 times 8 times 7, 224 over negative 16. And I think it's a little bit here, the square root of, where did he go? 144 to that, square root of 368, all over negative 16. So you can go with that. Um, if you want to find the decimal approximations for that, you can do that. Just make sure that you uh, find this in the numerator, you know, calculate that before you divide by negative 16, or put this in parentheses in your calculator when you're doing that. And this last one, um, it's, you know, what, what should we do here? What, what method should we use? Uh, well, since the x is inside the parentheses, which is squared, I could just cancel out that square with the square root. That would make life pretty easy. To use the quadratic formula, I'd have to multiply this all out, right? I get x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 16. I'd have to subtract 16 on both sides. Um, I'll get, um, what, 9, so x squared plus 10x plus 9, and uh, that's just going to, it's going to be lame. I don't really want to do that. So um, what am I going to get? I got plus or minus 4, I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides, x equals negative 5, 
plus or minus 4. So negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. So that was a lot easier. Just take the square root of both sides, subtract 5, combine those two like that. Um, if I were to use a quadratic formula, I'd come out with the exact same thing, but it would have taken me twice as long. Um, so just you know, choosing a method, the best, fastest, easiest way to solve these quadratics is not always a quadratic formula. If we can factor it, it'd be a little faster than doing the quadratic formula. If it's easy to do completing the square, we should go ahead and do that. Um, you know, that's that's my suggestion. Just uh, think about which method to use. Don't just do the quadratic formula. Um, but that is it, and thank you for watching.